Oh my God, is that the Jubilee collar? Why well, yes, it is. It's better than diamonds. <laughs> it's rhinestones, my God. <laughs> and you can make one too with your Jubilee stencil. La! Stay tuned to see how. Okay, so I'm going to be using my Jubilee design and I want to do it on this really fine, um, barely nude net for a bit of strength. I have doubled it over and because I don't want my, because my glue will run through, I am going to be doing it on this chopping board, which I have covered in cling film. Uh, the cling film will allow me to pull that glue off without it sticking permanently to the cling film. And it will also protect my chopping board because we don't want any toxins from the glue to pass through. So I've doubled over my tool and I've got my stencil. And I'm going to cut out my stencil shape. So I've got my stencil. You can use the little pinholes to thread your dressmaker pins through. Just holds the stencil in place. But with the, because I'm using the tool, the glue is going to pass through fairly quickly. It's going to hold it in place anyway. So I'm going to be using a syringe to apply my glue. I am going with the E6000 because it's fast drying and that's going to be better for using it on this tool. Anything that's too runny is just going to create a mess. It's also a gel based glue, which is better for this project. I use the syringe because it helps me stop wastage and it helps me to really get a measured amount of glue out each time. Don't fill it all the way. I'll show you why in a second. So you push the syringe this bit in, it has a stopper. You want to make sure that you've got a bit of room or a bubble at the top and then you break through that little seal and pull it back. If you fill it all the way up, once you push the push it through, you're just going to get a big mess. So I will be using clear 20s, 30s and 16s for this project, along with sapphire, claw set fancy stones and clear claw set emerald fancy stones. Here we have a, thir these are both 13 by 18 millimeter size fancy stones. Let's get started. So when you buy your stencil, you'll get a slip of paper with a, um, basically a paint by numbers diagram of the different size stones that you'll use, how many of each you need for this design. And it's just a guide to help you figure out uh, which size stones go in which holes to begin with. So I am just barely pushing, putting any pressure on that syringe. I'm dotting in my glue. Trying to be consistent and clean. This particular glue does tend to be quite fumy. I don't recommend using it um, in a confined space. Always have some airflow or a window opening and don't use it for long periods of time. Now I'm going to be working quite quickly because I, again, I don't want my tool to stick permanently to the cling wrap. That is the trick here. So my SS30s go in, SS30 holes, 20s are in the 20 hole, and 16s in the 16s holes. I use these shaker trays, you just shake them. The rhinestones turn the right way up, easy to pick up, and pour back into the bag. Always keep the tip of your syringe nice and clean. So this glue is drying a bit quicker than I had planned. 
So that means I'm just going to have to lift it up more frequently. This is a neat little trick. Use your stencil just to lift it carefully and keep it flat. This uh, lifting and dropping down process is only because I'm using a tool. The glue will go straight through the fabric. If I was using a solid fabric, I would just be rhinestoning till it's done. So I'm just going to let that dry for a minute. Okay, so now I'm just continue using my stencil, lining up with the last line and continuing on. So this is quite a wide collar and it's designed this way so that you can use this curve for different um, embellishments, for different to create appliques for um, garments. If you'd like to make it smaller, what I recommend is doing is freehand rhinestoning. Uh, just dot between each 20 freehand and do as many rows, rows as you like to bring the design in. So I'm lining up my stencil and I'm just going to keep going. Here I have finished my stencil. Now you can continue further round, but because of the design, the way that I've had to space out all of the um, shapes, it does not complete, it does not make a perfect circle. So you'll always have a gap and that is where you wanna keep some fabric so that you can attach your um, clasps or some snaps. Um, if you break it earlier, like I have, once you've cut it out, you can actually manipulate the fabric and close the gap. And that helps if you've got a smaller neckline. You can always slice in like a pizza just to give you a little bit more movement in the fabric and close that gap. Now I'm ready to put my fancy stones on. I'm pretty generous with my glue. Once again, I'm going to use my stencil to help lift this up. Now I'm going to turn this over very carefully. I'm going to leave it to dry upside down overnight. And then tomorrow I'm going to come back and I'm going to cut out my shape. And I'm going to leave a good inch either side so that I can attach um, some clasps. And I'm going to leave a good inch on the inside because depending how it fits on my neck, I might run a few more lines around the middle just to close it in. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions please let us know please comment below or get into contact with us directly when you buy the stencils and templates we really want to see what you do with them we want you to share it with us on social media because we absolutely love seeing what other people do with the rhinestones that we sell have fun <laughs>